Do you know one reason why you are hell-proof today? One reason why you can't go to hell. One reason is because when you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, trusting Him to be your crucified, buried, and risen Savior, you were justified. Many people don't know what justified means. That's okay, because I'm going to show you. What it simply means is to be declared righteous. Now, you weren't righteous. So the Lord had a way to get you righteous without you actually being righteous yourself. Do you know what that means? It means justification is free. You don't deserve it. You didn't earn it, and you can't maintain it. You never deserved it. God gives it to you free without any work on your part. Not only were you undeserving of salvation before you got saved, your life after you got saved is still undeserving of it. If you didn't deserve it then, then you don't deserve it now. So first, let's look at the fact that you aren't justified by doing something or not doing something. You're justified by believing. Acts 13, 39 says, And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So you can't justify yourself by keeping the commandments. You can't justify yourself by living holy after you get saved. It is by grace through faith without works. Galatians 2.16 Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Where I work, I talk to a lot of different people, a lot of truck drivers, things like that. And of course, I always end up in conversations with them about the Bible and about salvation. And this one man was a Christian man, and he told me that he believed the gospel and had been saved. But now, according to him, he is just maintaining his salvation. He's a good man, but he doesn't understand the doctrine of justification. If you didn't deserve salvation, yet God declared you righteous anyway, then why do you think you can do something to deserve salvation or to deserve justification after you get saved? You didn't deserve it then, you don't deserve it now. Galatians 3.11 But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. So a just man lives by faith. Because Hebrews 11.6 But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. For salvation, it's impossible to please God without faith. Without faith in what? Faith in your own goodness? Nope. Faith in water baptism? No way. Faith in church attendance? No. We're justified by faith in His blood. Romans 5, 9, Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. And when I say justified through faith in his blood, I mean that there was a point in your life that you knew you were unrighteous. You knew you were a sinner in danger of hellfire, and you put your trust in Jesus Christ's bloody death on the cross, his burial and resurrection to be your payment for all your sins. That's when you get justified. That's when you were declared righteous, and it wasn't your righteousness. It was the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's another salvation word, imputation. You're justified or declared righteous because God imputes the righteousness of Jesus Christ to your record, and then he doesn't impute your unrighteousness to your record. Your unrighteousness is nailed to the cross and paid for. Jesus became your sin on the cross. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus Christ died for every sin ever committed by man. 1 John 2.2 2, And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Romans 4.5-8 But to him that worketh not, but believeth 
on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without work, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord would not impute sin. So you're declared righteous or justified because God imputed the righteousness of Jesus Christ to your record and doesn't impute any of your sins to your record any longer. That is why you're saved, and that is why you get to go to heaven when you die. It's not because you deserve it. It's not because you abstain from a certain sin. It's not because you think you're living better than all the other Christians around you. It's because God put Jesus Christ's righteousness on your personal record and took all your unrighteousness off your personal record. Because you see, Jesus lived a righteous life because you couldn't. When John was trying to tell Jesus Christ that he wouldn't baptize him, uh, Jesus Christ said to John, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So Jesus Christ walked this world and fulfilled all righteousness. And that is the righteousness you get when you get saved. That's how God sees you in terms of your eternal salvation. He sees that perfect, spotless, sinless record of Jesus Christ. But to those who reject the free gift and go about to possess or establish their own righteousness, they aren't accepting the free payment. God died for every person, even the ones who deny Jesus Christ. The only difference between you and them is that they reject the payment and you accepted the payment. Galatians 5, 4, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. So if you're trying to be justified by your own goodness, or justified by the law, then you're simply rejecting the grace of God. That's what makes you f fall from grace. A safe person can't fall from grace. A person trying to get justified by keeping the law has fallen from grace. Titus 3, 7, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So justified by his grace. Grace is God giving us something that we don't deserve. Once again, you don't deserve justification. It's a free gift. Romans 3.20 Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Did you just hear that? By the deeds of the law your good deeds the good things that you do the bad things you abstain from doing by those things no flesh shall be justified in his sight. So you're trying to tell me that the things you're doing or the things that you're not doing in your flesh is what is keeping you justified. That is completely opposite of what the verse just said. So for the man who said that he's just maintaining his salvation, he's completely wrong, completely unbiblical, because it said, therefore by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Romans 3.28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Without. Without, without the deeds of the law. Romans 4, 2 through 5. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So if you believe on him that justifies you, it's your faith that's counted for righteousness, not the works. Romans 5.1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That is peace with God. You don't have peace with God until you get the blood applied to your soul. You don't get the blood applied until you accept the propitiation. You're thinking, what in the world is propitiation? Romans 3, 24 through 25 says, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past 
through the forbearance of God. 1 John 2, 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 1 John 14, here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Propitiation is the act of appeasing the wrath of God. When Jesus Christ became sin for us on the cross, he took the wrath of God that God had for all the sins of mankind. And until you accept Jesus Christ, the propitiation, you still have the wrath of God on you. John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So the moment you believe, you get out from under the wrath of God because Jesus Christ is the propitiation. He is the payment that appeases the wrath of God and that's why you have peace with God. You can't appease God's wrath by being good. He's not impressed with the good things that you do. He's really not impressed. Are you impressed when you see an ant carry a piece of dirt? I mean, and what you're doing is less than that. God's not impressed. Another thing that happens at salvation is reconciliation. This is another reason why you have peace with God. Colossians 1, 20 through 21, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether there be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet now hath he reconciled. So before salvation, you weren't a child of God. Contrary to popular belief, you were a child of disobedience. You were a child of wrath. Ephesians 2, 2, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Ephesians 2, 3, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, and the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Colossians 3, 6, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Acts thirteen ten, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord. So what I'm trying to get you to realize is that before salvation, you're a child of the devil and not a child of God. You're an enemy of God and you're, you weren't a friend of God. Colossians 1.21 And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. So this reconciliation, when you believe the gospel, Jesus Christ takes your hand, takes the Father's hand, and puts them together. He reconciled you. You were enemies. Now you're not enemies. Romans 5.10 For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So you have justification. You have propitiation. You have the reconciliation. All these words that people think they're big words, but they're not complicated. These those are just a few of them. These words show you that the only reason you're going to heaven is because what Jesus Christ did for you. And if you realize these things, that you have these things, then you'll realize that you're hell-proof and that you don't have to worry about losing your salvation. You don't have to worry when you go to bed at night and wonder, am I going to heaven when I die? What if I don't open my eyes? Will I open my eyes in hell like the rich man? Or will I open my eyes in heaven? You won't have to wonder that anymore. Because all you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. When he said, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. Jesus Christ died. He died by shedding his blood. He died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And Paul says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. If you come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are, 
and put your trust in him and what he did for you on the cross to be your payment for your sin, then you will be justified. God will give you the righteousness of Jesus Christ and he'll take away your unrighteousness. And that's all you got to do to go to heaven. And you can do that right now. You don't have to be in church. You don't have to have somebody pray with you. Just come to him the best way you know how right now and believe the gospel.